everybody, and welcome back to another Toku Pitch. It's my turn. <laughs> this one took a while because I'm not creative like these two. And I've been very busy. So, I'm not going to, mine's going to be more like Marcus's, where it's less of a, uh, what's the word? Scripted pitch. Okay. <laughs> Forgot the word scripted. But it is going to be cryptic. Less of a, oh. <laughs> So, are you doing a writer? Yeah. Okay. So, this writer takes place in what looks to be modern day, but essentially while we're panning through the city, there are, I want to say, translucent images of very mythical creatures. Mm -hmm. And our main character is just trying to walk to school, and he keeps rubbing his eyes. He's not acknowledging anything, he just keeps rubbing his eyes. Mm -hmm. Then we pan over to uh, one of the translucent creatures that looks to be running. Well, not really running, but flying. But he is being chased. Okay. He falls to the ground and into a humanoid form to which the main character stumbles upon. And through conversation with things like, oh, you can see me, stuff like that, he asks for the kid's help. Well, I want to say kid because I hate young writers. Young adult. We're talking mid, college age. Mid, I was thinking mid twenties. He's maybe he's he's, he's, in, he's, in, I'm, he's in school. Uh, he is in um, grad he's school. In school okay. Yeah, he's in grad school because he's trying to get his masters. There you go. Um, but we'll get it. I haven't really gotten into that. So he kind of puts his hand to the kid's chest and says, and kind of has this really confused look. And this is how we get our common writer, and who I am calling uh, for right now, common writer Kitty. Q-I-L-I-A. Mm, okay. This is a common writer with the motif of mythical and folklore creatures. A kitten, for those who don't know, is kind of, it is a primarily Chinese uh, mythical creature, but it's kind of a it's kind of a horse with a dragon head and a dragon tail. Fun fact, in Japanese, kitten means giraffe. There is actually a Japanese version, but I think it's called the Kirin. K-I-R-I-N. Um, so, and after that transformation takes place, the man is no longer a man. It is a Chinese dragon. Okay. So in this world, dragons are trying to kind of be the, um, the leading force of mythical creatures. They are, dragons are the villains. Mm. And this one did not agree with their, he does, he agrees that they are better, but he does not agree with their methods but of. But they shouldn't rule. He, he agrees that they are better, but he agrees, but he also thinks that there should be representation of other mythical creatures. It should not be a dictatorship. Okay. It's like, yeah, we're better than them. But she shouldn't say. Yeah. <laughs> Which is going to be one of the kind of the plot points of this character where we're going to kind of tackle his prejudice. Hmm. Because that's fucked up. <laughs> the perplexed look was essentially, he was trying to make the kid a dragon common rider. He was trying to give him dragon powers. Okay. But this is not a dragon. So that kind of sets up an, an overall arcing plot that, well, this guy's going to be the mentor character. Trying, this is essentially going to be Ghost in terms of what it tried to be with historical figures. Yeah. I want to teach the audience about the mythological creatures of different cultures. We're going to have a Pegasus form. We're going to have a Chupacabra form. We're going to have a Mothman uh, enemy yeah, or stuff nice. like that. I want to integrate all these different cultures because, again... And having the mentor character be prejudiced and slightly racist would really kind of counteract that. Mm. So I'm really having, I'm really liking that idea. How do you develop a hero when the mentor is flawed? Exactly. Especially when the hero has no idea what's going on. And the, he was seeing these things, but he thought they were, he thought he needed to go to the, the eye doctor. Mm. So he has this power already in him because no one else can see these creatures. Mm. But he. So through all the other, I don't have the full plot planned out like you do. I have major beats. Like there's going to be a Pegasus. There's going to be a sorry, a unicorn form. That's going to be his first alternate form, which is going to kind of be like his bladed form. And I already have an image of it in my head. Eventually, the there's going to be three villain dragons. Like, and I don't mean one dragon with two generals. I mean these are three villains, mm -hmm. three main villains with generals, and these three are. Always at each other's head. And no, it is not a Hydra. <laughs> Damn it. There is a Hydra, but he is... Hydras are smaller than these dragons, so he's a general. But one is a fire dragon, one is an ice dragon, and one is a lightning dragon. 
Okay, cool, cool. And so they'll be at each other's throats just as much as they're trying to fight. The common writer with yes. Will these will these three dragons be based on one particular cultural idea of a dragon, or will it be like the ice dragon is like more British? No, not English, yeah. but more like I guess, I guess you could say like Slavic folklore, or one is more pretty much Japanese. Yes, yes. Um, the fire dragon is definitely going to be the stereotypical four arms, winged, very English D and D kind of dragon. But the other two are going to be different, which is also why the Chinese dragon is a water dragon when he fights. Okay. Very rarely does he fight, but when he fights, he is a water dragon. Hmm. Um, I lost my place because this is in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, he's going to get the unicorn. Uh, eventually, they decide, one of them, one of the dragons def- decides we're going to fight fire with fire. Okay. We're going to find a kid. We're going to find a guy. He's going to be a whole thing. We're going to turn him into a werewolf. And he's going to be a werewolf common writer who will eventually become the secondary writer. Which, by the way, I already have a final form for him and for the main writer. Okay. The final form for the secondary writer, because I'm holding off on the main writer, his final form is going to be Cerberus. All right. Nice, nice. I'm trying to keep a motif, like, because he's... Is he going to be, like, like a beast? No, he was a human that... I said they, he's a human that... He's kind of talking about, like, his forms. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a bit... Like, um, his werewolf form is going to kind of be like the... God, what were they called in Wizard? The the one with the big claws? Mages? Yeah, he's going to be kind of like the mages. I was about to say, because he's got, like, the single dog-headed form of the Amorthus, which is the second one. Amorthus, which is the two-headed dog. Yeah. Essentially, that's kind of what's going to go on. Um, But in terms of his aesthetic, his base form is going to be that, but when he wants to, like, summon his full werewolf power, imagine two of those... Mage's claws. And then with Cerberus, they're going to be smaller claws, but he's going to have fire incorporated into it, of course. Okay. Stuff like that. Um, so while they're fighting, because I know the main writer is going to get a uh, unicorn form, a pegasus form, and a centaur form. Mm-hmm. Notice a trend. <laughs> yeah. So, and the entire time, the, key, the original Chinese dragon is trying to figure out what the fuck is this kid? <laughs> Because something's not right. Like, his parents are normal, so he's not, like, some hybrid. He's just... A, and it's not a Chosen One storyline before. Chosen! I, no. It's, <laughs> it's not a Chosen One. I, I kind of threw around the idea of his dad being a centaur in secret. Mm-hmm. But that sounded... I'm trying to not have it be... He can do this because he was born that way. So I'm... That's so, one of... That's some one of, people just have the gift. Well, I'm... I'm I was trying to think of more of something like Peter Parker, where mm-hmm. as something just happened, it would just happen to happen to him and mm-hmm. gave him these powers. Little did he know, mm-hmm. it it just was an accident. He's not special. He was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. But I never, I didn't have enough time to actually get the details of that. But that's essentially what it's going to be. I even threw around the idea of the Chinese dragon being his dad, but I thought that was dumb. Or one of the bad dragons being being his dad, I thought that was more dumb. Well, do it right, it could be good. I am your father. <laughs> this is already enough like American Dragon oh, Jake Long, so I'm trying to not get from other stuff. <laughs> um, But through the fight... To think of like the Peter Parker comparison, it could have been like when he was a kid, he just happened to be in an area where this invisible war was going on, and maybe some of the you know, energy yeah. from that. That is kind of where I was getting at. Or but, maybe he could be like, you said he was a student, he was a grad student of archaeology. I was also playing with that. I, but again, I didn't, I wanted him to not know anything about folklore so that he could be the audience surrogate when it comes to learning about these creatures. So would he be more of a science student then? Someone who's that would be, that was probably what I, I was honestly thinking science or math. So he would kind of question everything. Hmm. Um, but that is also how he... I was mainly thinking math, because I was also thinking that is how he would solve the problems by calculating the, by calculating stuff. Mm-hmm. I also wanted something more horse-related for his forms, because I wanted more rider kicks. Horses kick. Okay. So I was, it, wondering, I was wondering why you went with horses for uh, well, the main forms. Well, I was trying to find a much more Japanese... I, like I said, I was trying... The longest thing that took me was to find the base form. Mm-hmm. And I thought about Pegasus, but I wanted something that was more their culture. Mm-hmm. Japanese or Chinese or whatever. And I accidentally stumbled upon a key name while Googling. And I just thought it worked. So I kind of, when I said it was like, it's a horse-dragon hybrid, and I went, you know what, I'm going to take that and I will run with the horse idea. Okay. Yeah, especially because, you know, 
I think it's a good idea. Pegasus is a very, very prominent yeah, and Japanese culture. Thank you, Saint Seiya. <laughs> and unicorns are also kind of present in every culture. Yeah, in some point in there, yeah. But he will get forms of other creatures that aren't horse-related, but those are the first two, because he has to kind of be compatible with them. Because he's going to be saving other creatures from the dragons, and these are creatures that are going to be characters. We're not going to have some... We're going to have goblins. We're going to have fucking... Um, a chupacabra. We're gonna have all this other shit. Like, and they are monsters, but they'll have another side. It's like, this is what I do. I don't like to do it, but it's just in my nature. So it's really got this nature versus nurture thing, which is where this prejudice comes from. It's like you heard him. It's in his nature. He will always be a monster. Mm-hmm. So it, there's gonna be a lot of that. But at the eventually, one of the dragons is going to show up, and you know, and say, "I'm tired of this." It's typically when he defeats the Hydra. Mm. I'm tired of us sending other people to fight our battles. This is not our way. Mm. And he's going to wipe the floor with this kid. Mm. And then that is when it is revealed, because the entire time the the mentor has not told him that he used to be on the Thule Council of Dragons. Where he saves the kid. It's going to be a very Die Ranger-esque type deal. But he's not going to die. Not yet, at least. (laughs) And then they just, that is where the arc begins the arc to get the final form. Dragons are, he says, dragons are creatures of pure destruction. We need to fight them with a creature of pure creation. Mm. You must find the last phoenix egg. Mm. I knew that's where you were going. Yeah, it's me. It's still me. But it, it, in my mind, it made sense. A creature that will always be rebirth, rebirthed as opposed to something that will always destroy. I thought it was a good antithesis. And when he gets the form, that is essentially the ability is that he, it's essentially, it's going to be within like the last three episodes of the show when he gets it. Okay. Because he's essentially unbeatable in this form because any wound he is given will heal. And if he is, if he is defeated, he will be reborn. It may take a while, but he will come back. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that's going to come in halfway through the show that breaks the show. I wanted it to be very Kuga-esque, where this is like the last thing he gets, and it's just the final arc from that point on. Cool. That's essentially all I've got planned. That sounds good. Cool. Yeah, it does. I like it a lot. Yay. Could you give a few examples, if, if you can think of any, of how his... of how certain forms would be integrated into his combat? Um. Well, like I said before, the, um, the unicorn form will give him a, not a sword, but a spear. Okay. Or a lance. Because it's not a because it's going to be cone shaped, so that is going to be his weapon combat. The or centaur form is too. the centaur form is going to give him a bow and arrow. That's his ranged ability. The Pegasus will give him wings, so he'll integrate that. In, but he'll only use that against other flying creatures okay. to kind of even the playing field, mm. stuff like that. In terms of the Kirin form, it's going to be very. Um, I'm trying. To, I can't remember. I had the name. It was a martial arts. It's very kick heavy. So, Muay Thai. Muay Thai is knees and elbows. Taekwondo. Probably Taekwondo. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be, he's going to be very kick heavy. And I didn't have a lot of other forms planned out besides those major four. Or mm-hmm. sorry, five. We sort of don't need more than that. No, we don't. But I also, and then obviously the secondary writer is going to, the secondary writer is going to kill one of the dragons as, you know, revenge. The, uh, Mentor is going to come back to full power and kill one of the dragons, and then the main character is going to kill the, the big bad red dragon, mm-hmm. the fire dragon, at the very end. Okay. So everybody gets a moment. Cool. <sighs> Thank yeah, you. Good stuff. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> Thank you for having us. How you say you don't have a name? Is I, it maybe come right Keaton is Keaton, is yeah. all I have thus far. If you have a better name, I'm all yours. I like it. Yeah, it works for me. If anybody else has. Please, let us know. Um, I like how you mentioned the racism thing. I'm just going to go ahead and mention it here before we end up getting into the whole Vice thing. So the VA for Vice, who is this, the black one, who was like mm-hmm. had the shroud on his head. Uh, some interesting things come up about him this week. So, oh shit, really? Yeah, from last year. The dude's like a mix of German and Japanese, but he lived here uh-huh. for a while. Um, and he was like on Broadway and stuff. Blackface. Posted something on Instagram last year, and then he deleted it, and now whenever somebody brings it up, uh, 
just watch them. At least on Twitter. Uh, I'm not going to blame anybody if you don't want to watch this show. I'm not going to blame anybody if you do want to watch this show. That is just one person. Yeah. And, you know, out of the entire staff. Mm-hmm. And he's not even on screen. All you do is end up hearing his voice. So I think that's how I'm going to end up approaching this going forward. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to go ahead and put that out there because obviously I have an issue with it. But I'm just going to view the character of Vice as Vice. I'm not going to view it as his VA his VA doesn't matter. He is now officially trash. He's been trash. He's been recycled because we agreed with this bitch. He's now voiced by Ken Giotto. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. Good job, though. Thank you. Yes. And no blackface to be found. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, let us know what you think in the comments below. And as always, follow us on all the things. We do um, have more of these coming. Uh, I believe, uh, is it your turn next? Yes. Are you doing a Ultraman or a Sentai? I'm going to do a Sentai next. Okay. I'll, I'll probably, probably have a plan for that. I'll probably do that as well. I already have an idea. I just need to flesh it out. I've got a few more too. Bye, everybody. Don't forget to join us all the things. Thank you for watching.